and welcome to another episode of Jackson Talks. Everybody, with me, your host, Jackson Stone. Um, this episode uh, today is brought to you by the power of social media, um, which we'll kind of get in today and the positive side of, of social media. But I'm here uh, today joined by life coach uh, Griffin. What's up, man? Yo, Jackson, I um, appreciate us connecting and us coming together and I'm grateful that you had me on and it's a pleasure to, to meet you. We follow each other on social media, but now we can uh, build a connection and and uh, get to know each other. So I'm grateful for you having me. Yeah, I, uh, I put a little thing on my Instagram saying, who should I have on my podcast? And you said you, and then I was just like excited that, because I get excited when people advocate for themselves, right? Because it's important to be your own you know, your own like best advocate. And so you did that. And then I obviously had already followed you on Instagram and saw the, all the amazing content you were posting about personal development and mindset and empowerment. And that's stuff that's like right in my wavelength. And I thought, what a beautiful idea to have this man on the pod. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And that's for everyone listening. And for you, that's, um, that's something that's pushing me out of my comfort zone of reaching out, advocating for myself, putting myself out there. Um, but something that I'm really striving to achieve as I just continue my own development is putting myself around people who are going to add value and people who are going to um, keep keep helping me get to the levels that I want to get and exceed those levels. And so um, it's a prime example of just put it out into the universe and um, if it happens, it happens. And if, if not, then it wasn't meant to be at the time. So, um, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, so there's a, uh, a pretty intentional way that I always start this show. Uh, I think someone, uh, like you will really appreciate it. Um, but it starts with a question, um, a very basic question. Um, but a question that a lot of males especially answer with, I'm fine. I'm all right. Um, knowing that that's not really true, that they have something, you know, deeper going on inside that they probably need to let out. And so I'm going to ask you this question um, and hopefully you want to answer it honestly and openly. And then we can kind of get into the meat, meat and potatoes of, of you and your story after that. So um, how are you doing? Like for real, for real? Yeah. Well, before I dive into that, um, I want to acknowledge you asking me that question. I was actually going to be ready to ask you that question. Um, because to your point, I feel like males um, more than females don't get asked that question. And there's a wall. There's a certain um, stigma around we have to present as strong. We have to present as um, we're in control. And sometimes we, we may not be. But um, to how I'm feeling right now, I'm feeling... I'm feeling really um, inspired currently at the moment. Um, I've I've taken a leap recently um, in terms of pushing myself, kind of like I mentioned, outside of my comfort zone and growing myself um, in areas that I've never been willing to to go in and grow. Um, and there's some vulnerability that's coming with it and some openness and honesty, uh, cause I have to face some of those, um, those limiting beliefs or some of those barriers that I've had my entire life. Um, but ultimately, ultimately the, those feelings are transforming to inspiration because I'm ready to overcome some of those things and I'm ready to unlock everything for myself um, so that I can be my best. And so as a, as a mindset and empowerment coach, I can then um, help, help clients get, get to this, those same points. So um, currently today, I'm feeling inspired. Woke up, got through my morning routine, got a good workout in, got a good mental workout in with some journaling and meditation. And um, now I'm here, man. How, Beautiful. Can, how are you feeling? Um. Right at the moment, I feel very good, very good. Um, I think the feeling that I have the most often is probably overwhelm. Um, uh, maybe like yourself, um, I am also very inspired and I want to do a lot. And so at times I, I don't take my own advice um, and I don't empty my own cup first before 
trying to help others. So at times I do get very, very overwhelmed. Um, but it's an overwhelm of, of things that only I want to do. Like I'm not overwhelmed by other things that like I'm, I'm not excited about. So, it, so I can kind of manage it well. Um, but overall, very good at times. Yes. Like I said, overwhelmed, but I think that's okay. Um, cause I'm still trying to manage and learn that everything that I talk about is still something that I'm trying to figure out cause I don't have it figured out. Someone just told me, or I read it in a book, you know, and it resonated with me and I remembered it and now I can share it. Um, and so I think that's an important distinction to make on social media, which we, we can get into, um, which is why we got connected. But everyone who posts, you know, development, human development, all these kinds of things is still in their own journey and process too. And no one has it really figured out. Maybe some people are at a higher level than others, you know, quotation marks there, because what does really that mean? Um, but I think that's an important note to make. And, and maybe you want to touch on that as well. Yeah, I, um, I think, I think the best way to really be able to connect and be authentic and inspire and empower and create community, um, is by living those things and by doing those things. And, um, that was a little bit of what I was feeling was a sense of imposter syndrome of kind of in you, and you mentioned the piece about not always taking my own advice, pouring into people, but not actually living it or filling myself up to pour into myself. Um, and I think that's huge. And I think that I think that's really easy for people in social media to potentially catch on to because it might so not sound as pure or it might not sound as um, authentic. And and so um, I think it's important um, that we take the time um, to do those things and, and, and share our own journey. Um, I think I'm a huge believer that you, you'll, no one, no one will ever arrive. You'll never mm. get there. There's, there's not an end. It doesn't end. It's a journey. Um, but what I think you can do along the way is I think you can touch on some of those skills and ways to really understand self um, and know how to live a fulfilling life. And um, something for me is just continuing my growth on my own self-awareness um, of how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling certain ways, what's filling me up, what's not, what's bringing me energy, um, who's bringing me energy, who's not bringing me energy. Just having a lens of awareness is, is, um, is a real foundation of what I believe helps um, through the process of, of going on your own journey. Yeah. And, and with that awareness, are you, are you asking yourself certain questions after certain experiences or things you do? Like, how are you creating that awareness? Cause like, for me, it's like, if I go see a movie in the theaters, which I haven't done in a while, hopefully we get to soon. Um, at the end of the movie, I'm going to ask myself if I liked it. And I think we rarely do that with with people in our lives or with other things that could be a, a little bit more larger scale and impact on our life. So how, how are you, like what questions are you asking yourself or what are you doing to try to harness that awareness? Yeah. Um, I think, I think the two most basic questions people can ask themselves are how am I feeling and why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. um, and those are, that's it. How am I feeling? Because when you think about how I'm feeling, then you're taking a pulse on your energy and pleasantness level. Where am I energy wise and where am I pleasantness and where is that meeting up? How is that? What what word is that? Then that's how am I feeling? And then the layer to that is once you're able to um, recognize what that feeling is for yourself, then it's the understanding of, well, why am I feeling this? What was it for me that created anxiety? What's the feeling for what's the reason it's created um, inspiration. Um, now, do I wish that at every moment and every day or every experience I have, I, I, I take that moment to do that? Um, no. There are times that I get stuck in the rabbit trail of day to day and um, then all these experiences happen and I'm like, oh shit, how am I feeling? And I'm like, well, it was deep seated from the first one, but it trickled through all the rest of them. That's that's a process. And that's a, again, that's a journey. But um, if you can ask yourself, how are you feeling? And why are you feeling a certain way? You'll, you'll, in a sense, kind of start to audit your day to day. 
you'll start to think about, okay, well, if this fills me up, then I got to do more of this. Or if this person drains me, um, how do I put how do I put boundaries around that to protect my energy level so that I'm not drained by this person? Um, and so again, when you think about those, it doesn't need to be a long drawn out. I'm going to sit and journal it. It doesn't need to be a 45 minute, 30 minute process. It can be quick. Like you have an experience, you get in your car or you step into your office or you're in the bathroom or you're creating stillness for yourself. Just ask yourself, how, how, how am I feeling from that? from, from whatever that just was. And, and, and why am I feeling that that's how am I feeling creates the, the recognizing what it is, but the why is the real root to, to kind of where that emotion's coming from. Um, yeah. so I think, I think asking those two questions, um, again, I'm no expert in of doing it a hundred percent of my day, but when I'm trying to figure out awareness for myself and, and things like that, those are questions that I, I will ask myself. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's brilliant. Um, and I think the only way to really answer those questions in a very honest way is to be present in those moments that you're, that you're at, right? I can't answer a question about how I'm feeling or what I just did or how it made me feel if I wasn't there in the moment because we talk about, I'm sure you do all the time, like mindfulness and being aware and understanding our thoughts, but that's, that's all in our head, right? Sometimes we need to just get out of our head because we're trapped in there. And so if we have control over that, which we have control over our thoughts, if we're aware and we're in the present moment, that gets us out of our head. And then we are putting ourselves back in it to then ask these certain questions to see if we like certain things or not. And if there, there's something we want to continue doing. And that's an important kind of a, uh, little distinction that's hard like none of this stuff is easy so yeah and i appreciate you saying that that's a big piece too is just the presence of it um and again for for listeners and 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 jackson i i'm not sure if, if you talk through this at, at any of very points with your community um but again when you're creating pr presentness and stillness for yourself in that moment that doesn't mean you know, so many times people use time as an excuse. Well, I don't have 10 minutes. I don't have 20 minutes. I don't have 30 minutes. No one's telling you it needs to be that long. Mm -hmm. It can be 30 seconds. It can be 20 seconds. It can be a minute. It can be super short, but it's the awareness and it's creating that gap of space between experiences to really be able to, to just gauge where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, you, you know what you're talking about. So I kind of want to get into like, uh, how this happened. Um, I have a personal opinion that people don't really get into like life coaching or personal development or human development or helping people unless they kind of have a, a story or a reason for getting there. I know my viewers, uh, know my story and, um, I can share with you, uh, if you would like later, but, um, What's, what's your story? I know that's a very broad and, and open-ended question, but, but how did we get here? And, uh, you know, I'll dive in deeper to some few points that you say throughout the way, but let's, let's go there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, man, for me, it's been a journey. Um, and, and it's been a recent journey. It's probably been a year long journey, um, at this point. Um, to where we are today. Um, my background is in education. Um, and um, I'm currently um, operating as a life coach and a um, administrator in an elementary school. Um, wow. And when I was a classroom teacher, kind of going, going way back, um, to me, it was all about relationships. Um, I wasn't I wasn't the educator who went in because I wanted to have the best math lessons or the best reading lessons. Like my goal was to really create an environment where kids can feel like they could be them be their best selves. Um, at that point, to me, that was just authentically who I was. Um, and that that evolved. Um, and I and I won't go completely like all into it because my life story will take forever. But um, that evolved to then me wanting to do it on a larger scale. 
um, where I, I wanted to go the route of educational leadership because um, I wanted to help create change in a social emotional sense in schools. Um, I, I'm a huge advocate um, for emotional intelligence. I'm a huge advocate for equity and equality. I'm a huge advocate for, for all of those things that kind of make up what social emotional learning is um, for students. And as I continued um, on my journey with education, um, again, going a little bit to imposter syndrome, <clears throat> I was doing a lot of work and doing a lot of research and working with adults um, in understanding these things for ourselves, but I wasn't necessarily living it. Um, I, I kind of hit a ceiling um, of, of not feeling completely fulfilled. Um, I was going through a separation um, and so that, that was one avenue where um, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of moments of unclarity, um, of not being clear. Um, and then I wasn't feeling this sense of fulfillment with work. Um, I also, I also um, grew up in a community that, that gave a lot of protection, but sometimes too much protection to the point where um, some of the decisions were made for us. Um, and in my mind, there were certain, there were certain creative avenues that I never even knew existed. Um, and I say that because I had a moment last year when I kind of was like realizing that I was so attached to so many external things. I was attached to um, a relationship that I was in. I was attached to work and things like that. And I depended on those for fulfillment. Um, and when those weren't starting to fulfill me, I was realizing how unfulfilled I was actually feeling. Um, but again, going to all those things with emotional intelligence and, and, and all those different components in an educational sense, i still had a lot of passion around that. Um, and so I was trying to think, how can I, how can I get this to more people? How can I, it's great that it's there for children. How can I impact anyone who's just going through life? Um, and I, I found myself reading a lot. I was never a reader. Um, and then I found myself listening to like Jay Shetty, Lewis Howes, um, Ed Milet, like all these guys who I just left like so fired up. Mm -hmm. um, and for the first time I made a decision and a commitment that I was going to pour into myself. I was going to take the time to pour into me. And that was a lot of understanding who I was, understanding what my values were, understanding what I want in life, understanding what I want to do with my life, trying to take control over that. Um, and that's still a process. I'm not anywhere near all that. Um, but with that, that led to me wanting to go the route of a life coach. I want, I wanted, I had so many limitations to myself, um, for just all these different reasons and the lack of self-love and confidence and all these things. And I noticed it, I started to notice it in myself and I noticed that other people deal with that too. And I wanted to impact people to where they could understand, like, I can be anything I want to be. I can go do whatever I want to do. Um, everything in our past and our experiences has made us who we are today. And those are beautiful. Let's, let's talk about those and then let's ultimately project ourselves forward. Um, but to, to what we were saying from the beginning, I had to go through my own journey to get there. Um, so that's my story. I, I was at a point basically to kind of put the little bow on it. I was at a point of like sense of loss and clarity and um, realized that I wasn't filling my cup and I had to figure out ways to fill my cup because um, I don't know what route it would have led down led to if I continue to ignore that. Um, and, um, so that's kind of where I've gotten to today. And, um, and that's my goal. My goal is to ultimately 
fill myself up all the time um, so that I'm my best self and so that I can um, hopefully work with people who want to be their best self. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I got a few things that I want to double click on. Yeah. Um, but uh, Sorry, that was probably long winded. No, that was not long winded at all. That was like three minutes. It was perfect. Right. Um, so let's double let's double click on clarity for a second. I yeah. think that word uh, is a big word because I think it ha it it it, it, uh, it aligns with like what's my purpose Correct. and having clarity on your life and finding purpose is like this is a huge thing. Um, and so many people on social media talk about it. All you have to do is find your purpose. That's it. And everything else will be great. Well, that's what like, that mean? you know, all you have to do is figure out who you are and you'll be great. And then you can show up in any room as yourself. Like those things are true, but how do you, like, how do we get there? So that's the, that's the meat and potatoes of it all. Like that's the real nuggets of wisdom that people actually can take with them and use in their life. So for you specifically, like, was there, was there a video you watched? Was there a moment in time? Um, was there something that just kind of clicked that helped you find clarity? Because you didn't just wake up one day and be like, I want to be a life coach. Yeah. You know, maybe it's been something that you've been thinking about for years on end and you finally decided to dive into it. Or maybe it was the podcast that you watched or maybe it was a, like, yeah. um, how, how did we get to that real clarity portion of your life? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that. Um, Especially in the sense of, I like how you phrase it as the, the meat and potatoes. Like it's the work behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's the content I'm pushing out or the podcast episode I release, like there's work on the back behind the scenes that goes into why it's there, why it's resonating, why I'm doing. So I appreciate you asking that. Um, shit, man. There's a lot of work that goes into all of that. Um, to, where it, to where it started um, was On Purpose by Jay Shetty. If, if listeners, I don't know if, if your community or, or people have talked about that, but um, that was a huge one for me. Um, Again, just just the, the the types of people he brings in, the the wisdom that that he has, um, and the way that he makes it so clear, um, really resonated with me and just got me thinking. Um, and I got I I started. I think the biggest thing for myself um, when when it started was right. We talk about clarity, and so I had. I kind of had a, a big thing for me is reflection. I had to really like figure out how, how to reflect on where I was. Um, and what I started to do, I started to journal. That was the first thing that started. And I'll be honest, I opened up a journal for the first time and I was like, I don't even know what to write. Like <clears throat> at uh, what age was this when you started journaling for the first time, like a year ago? Yeah. yeah. So like age 30. Yeah. Age 30. Okay. Age Just 30. to make that clear for people who think they're too old to start or yeah, whatever. No, I, yeah. Hey, yeah. Everyone, everyone on Jackson's, Jackson's community, you're, you're never, you're never too old. You can start at any moment. Yeah. It took, it took me, I had reflected, but not, not to the depth of reflection. Um, you know, I was forced to do it in work and things like that, but not, not to like, what do I value? What do I want? Where am I lacking? Where am I unfulfilled? Like that level of reflection. Um, and so when I started to reflect, I realized that I was operating on a just, I wasn't pausing in my day. I wasn't creating space and stillness. Um, and so I would just go, 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 go through my day. And then I would be drained. And I was like, why am I feeling this way? Um, but I had to, through listening to Jay Shetty um, and through starting to journal, I started to just really listen to myself. All of those thoughts that were going on in my head my entire life, all of those um, deep seated um, voices that were always there, like I decided to finally sit and listen to those. Um, to just think about kind of what, what do I need to do? What, what's some of the work that I need to put in for myself to, to gain clarity? Um, and then 
tied with Jay Shetty um, is, I don't know, Jackson, have you read Think Like a Monk? Ah, uh, that's funny that you asked. I was just about to say that, but uh, I'm actually listening to it on Audible um, right now. So yeah, I'm, so, I'm like in the first chapter, so I'm not, I haven't dove too deep into it yet, but it's there. Yeah, word. Um, enjoy that and take in one of, I don't really like giving advice, but um, <laughs> take, take your time with it. Yeah. Um, that, that was a book that I was reading it and I was like mind blown by every page. Um, and again, I had to create the stillness and protect that space for myself to be there and be vulnerable. But once I opened myself up to some of the things that I wanted to uncover for myself, that book ended up being a great guide. Um, every chapter basically um, in every section has so many activities that you can do. I mean, the first part of the book is all about identity, right? What's your identity? Well, there's certain questions and there's certain um, pra practical exercises that you can do to start thinking about your identity so that you can start thinking about where do my values come from um, and different things like that. And those were things that I never thought of. I was like, what do you mean? I am who I am. Like, yeah, my identity is this, but it was like, does that fully align with what I want to do in life? And I had never thought to that, to that level before. And so when I mentioned clarity, it was that work. It was that work of diving into myself to go to back to the foundation. What do I want to achieve in life? What do I want to be able to do? Who do I want to be? Where is my happiness coming from? What are the things that I stand for? What are the things that I value? Like through that book and through those exercises, I started to think about those things. I started to really uncover who, who my soul was. Um, and um, yeah, so when, so when, so when I mentioned clarity, it was that back work. It was that tough time of like scratching my head being like, oh, I don't even know. Like, I don't know the answer to this most basic question. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was the vulnerability to, to really just show up to myself to be like, if, you, if, this, if you're feeling unfulfilled and you're feeling unhappy, like this is the only way you're going to get there. You got you to gotta listen to yourself and you, gotta, you, you have to understand yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned uh, like core values and like a personal philosophy that to me is the uh, like you said, is the starting block for figuring out clarity, like what values mean the most to me that I want to filter my thoughts and actions through. Um, and there's this guy that I, I took a course from. His name is Michael Gervais. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a sports psychologist. He works for the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. And he put out a course with Pete Carroll about basically finding your best. Yep. And the basis of this course is about finding your personal philosophy. Correct. And that all that means is you're finding what your core values are and you're shrinking it down to one sentence. Like what is the, you know, your first you start with 25 big words. What are 25 words that mean something to you? What are a few quotes that mean something to you? What would the, the, uh, the most important people in your life say about you? And then you just start to shrink it down. You start to shrink it down. And then you have this one sentence. That's your personal philosophy. And every day you start to memorize that and commit to it. And you start to filter all your thoughts and actions through it. Again, not going to happen 100% of the time. But it's something that we can see in front of us to actually put into action. Because a lot of stuff on social media is just fluff. Right? It's just fluff. It's, no, it's nothing you can actually practice or do. Uh, it's nothing you can grab tangibly. It's just like... Hey, go out there and find your purpose, <laughs> right? Which is true. You should, but how do we do that? And you know, what you're talking about and what I'm talking about are things that we can actually implement to try and find that. And it's not going to happen tomorrow, but when it does happen, boy, is it a serious unlock, you know? Yeah. Um, right. When you talk passion and purpose and clarity and those are like buzzwords, right? It's like it, there, there's no, there, if you don't ask the right questions and like you asked me, there's no grounding to what does that mean? What does that look like? And that's where the real work is. 
the real work is in, if you're talking about clarity, what does clarity mean? If you're talking about your passion, well, what's your passion? Um, and how do you get there and what do you do? Um, so I think, I think that's a huge, that's a huge piece um, for everyone because we, we can all get there and we mm -hmm. all have it in here. We all have it in here. It's the vulnerability and it's the readiness to do what it takes to get there. And it's, it's fucking hard work. Yeah, it is very, very, very hard. Um, and so if anyone in my community is looking for a coach, That's right. check out Griffin on Instagram. Um, but for real, like, you know, we, uh, we tend to shy away from asking for help, uh, you know, especially as males. Um, you know, I grew up in the sports community um, and we have coaches at every level, every level. LeBron James has a coach. Tom Brady has a coach. These guys are the best athletes in the whole world winning championship after championship. And they still have a nutritionist, a mental performance coach, a head coach, you know, all of these coaches, even though they're the best. Right. And so I think we can implement that in our lives and just asking for a little bit of help, asking for some feedback, you know, asking for someone to bounce some ideas off of like, what are you doing that helps you do this? You know, um, and it starts there and then you can go deeper by actually hiring a professional, um, which I recommend, you know, for, for mental health needs, as well as, you know, life coaching needs or nutritional needs or a personal trainer. Um, and so, yeah, just yeah, my little I, plug there. Yeah. I, I 100% agree. Um, it's really funny because your exact examples are the examples that I use when I talk to people about coaches needing coaches. Um, and not, and not just, sorry, that's coming from my lens of a coach saying that coaches need coaches, but everyone needs a coach in my personal opinion. Now coaches are not for everyone, but I do believe that everyone could benefit from having a coach mm -hmm. because there gets, you're going to put in your own work. You're going to put in everything that you have within yourself, but you're only going to get to a certain spot. You can never do anything alone. You to be able to break barriers, to be able to break through, to be able to be your ultimate best self and just project to the next level. You need to have the support system around you. You need to have those people who are championing you, who are supporting you, who are empowering you, who are asking you those tough questions to have you to notice some of your blind spots. And people like Tom Brady, people like LeBron James, people like Tiger Woods, people like Serena Williams, all mm. those people utilize. When you talk about people like Gary V, when you talk about like major moguls in business, when you listen to them talk, they all have people that are helping them. Every single one of them. And so, um, yeah, it's never be afraid to reach out. Never be afraid to say, to say, Hey, I've hit a limit and I'm ready to keep going, but I, I need some support in getting there. Yeah. Yeah. I love what I you said. You ever read shit. I'm going to butcher the name. Uh, the goat. Oh God. The horse, the boy, and the, it's, it's like a fable story. Have you ever read that? Uh, -uh. there's a part in it where the horse says, um, says one of the most powerful things that you can do is ask for help. And the little boy says, why? He goes, because when you ask for help, you're showing that you're not giving up. You're showing that you, that you're ready to die, like to go. You're ready to dive in. Yes. Yes. Asking for help is, uh, is the best. It's the best thing you can do. Um, yeah, I love what you said about, I said that all the time, like no one, you can't do anything great alone. You know, you need support, you need help, you need guidance, you need friendship, relationships are everything. The connection we have with people is everything. That's why the last year of our lives was so hard because, you know, we felt like we lost that connection and we lost that relation, those relationships and, uh, and bringing those back and, and connecting with one another in a genuine way is, is really how we support each other. Correct. Did I lose you? I, I hear you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So I think that's super important. I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, um, but I want to, uh, I want to now touch on, on your Instagram page Yeah, because I think for one posting on social media is really hard, uh, posting vulnerable videos, videos on social media is really hard. And, you know, did you, I mean, we all started our accounts from zero followers. So starting an account with no followers is extremely daunting. 
Yeah. You know, so there's, there's a transition in your life, you know, that I can see through just by talking to you today that, you know, you found you, you lacked fulfillment. Then you went out and found a little clarity in your purpose, figured out who you are and kind of what direction you want to go at least, and then made a huge leap to say, okay, now I want to help people and post myself in video format on social media for the world to see in a, with a male talking about vulnerability and mental health and meditation and journaling, yeah. um, which is amazing. I love it. I do the same thing. But there takes a, a, a bit of um, you know, leap of faith and a bit of courage to say that I want to do this. So what was that like for you, that process? Man, um, that process was scary, to be honest. Mm. Um, I had my own personal Instagram account, probably like every run of the mill person of just uh, post here and there and I'll follow these people. This is how we stay in touch, but never looked at it as a as just a sharing my story of, of being open to who I am and what I'm going through and what's resonating with me. Um, and then ultimately turning that into now a platform where I'm trying to, to share enough to where people want to come work with me. And so it's turning into a platform like that, that is still stuff I'm trying to navigate and figure out. Um, but when I say, when I say scary, um, where that feeling came from was that was authentically me, but now I'm worried about the judgment from others. I'm worried about what are my boys from home going to say? What are, what are these kids that I knew from college going to say? What are these girls that I've known for years going to say? What are, what are, what are my, what are my ex-wives friends going to say? Like just anyone. And I don't, I don't know why I care. It, it wasn't that I cared, but I was, for whatever reason, I was worried about what people were going to think. Um, and so I sat with that. And instead of running from it and saying like, no, I'm not going to do it. I sat with it to really figure out like, why, why, why do I care? Why do I care with what these people say? If it's a passion of mine and it's something that's fulfilling to me and it's something that I want to share and something that I want to do and it fills me up each day and my happiness is is starting is starting to um, rise and I'm starting to be the best version of me, then then screw it. Like I just have to go all in and I have to be vulnerable and I have to put myself out there because I want people to be able to connect with me. And so, dude, I honestly just it sounds kind of cold to say, but it's not, it's in, it's intentional for the protection of me. Um, but I kind of just said like, screw it. Like I'm doing it. I'm in, and I'm doing it with knowing that there's going to be messiness around it and knowing that people are going to judge and knowing that people are going to talk, but who cares? They're going to talk anyways. Who cares? Mm -hmm. They're going to say shit anyways. It, so why, why does that matter? To, that shouldn't matter to me as long as it's bringing me fulfillment um, and I'm enjoying and I'm connecting with the right people and I'm doing the things that I want to do. All of that shouldn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's so true, you know? Um, and, and we like when we post videos, we rarely know, who watched it and who was really touched by it, right? Correct. And and that portion of it to me is uh, is really beautiful, you know. Um, yes, you you may get a negative comment or you know someone saying that this is whack or whatever, you know, all that happens in life, no matter what you do, and that's totally cool and fine. But that one person that was sitting in their room, you know, in the dark with the lights off and scrolling through Instagram, found your video and everything changed for them you know that's that's the magical moment and we never see that it's the same way that in life if i hold the door open for someone and for me it was a regular thing but for them it was like oh there's actually still good people in the world 
that I'm telling you that small ass gesture yeah. can be something that saves someone's life and we never know about it. And, and so I think that's really the beauty of all of that, um, of yeah. all these quote unquote small gestures or videos or whatever we're posting or doing that's like bringing light and, and love into the world. Um, and yeah, I, you know, yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. I think, I think that's huge. And, and as I'm navigating the social media world and people start talking followers and likes and things like that, that all that can get lost. Um, but again, um, that brings me back that, and that's where journaling and that's where awareness and that's where stillness really has helped me because in those moments, we, we all can get lost in that. We all can get caught up in that. Um, but then I bring myself back to like, what do I want to do? And I just want to impact people in a positive way. I just want, I just want to impact people in a positive way. That could be one, that could be 10, that could be a hundred, that could be a million. It doesn't matter. I just want to impact someone. Right. Um, and I think to your point, when we can do things to share our experience, when we can live and lead our lives with kindness and, and gratitude and, and go into our day with those things, you never know who you're going to, who you're going to touch. And guess what? We don't always have to, we don't have to know. No, no one needs to tell us. We don't, we don't deserve that. We don't deserve to, to know, well, you saved that person's life because you held the door for them, but just making that small gesture, because guess what? They're going to go do it to someone else probably at some point. And, and that's how this world, and that's how this, this polarity and some of the bullshit that our, our world is dealing with, that's how we start uniting ourselves together is these small acts. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and that's the beauty of social media. Social media can be a bitch. Social media can create false images and cr create all these comparison um, issues. But social media can also be super impactful and powerful um, when it's being utilized in the right reasons. Yeah. How, how do you specifically tell about the people that you follow and the people that you uh, are inspired by? You think you get like a, like a gut feeling that what they're saying is authentic? Like, how do you know just through like a curated social media lens that the person that you're following is someone that's being like real? Is there, is there a thought process you have about that? You know, I've never really looked at it through that sense. Um, but I will say that when it comes to me following people, when it comes to me listening to messages from people, um, it's not usually from one platform. Mm -hmm. For example, Jay Shetty. And I'll, or, you know, I already talked about Jay Shetty. I'll use Lewis House. Um, I heard about Lewis House through his podcast, School of Greatness. And so I started listening to School of Greatness. I started to understand who Lewis House was, how he was as an interviewer, what kind of personality he was. And then I started to follow him on social media. And then I saw the messages that he put out. And then, so at that point, I had different lenses to look at Lewis House. You know, at that point, okay, well, he's being one thing on social media, but then he's different in his podcast or he's different on his spot. Like it, when I had more ways to look at Lewis House, I was able to see his authenticity behind who he was. Um, and so I don't, to answer your question in social media, I don't necessarily try to figure out if people are authentic or not. I'm more so just start to develop more of a lens of big picture of who they are. Mm. Um, and that's then when I start to um, really take in some of the content that they're saying or resonate with it or connect to it or, or, um, or watch a video that, that for example, like Mike for Mike, like Mike will put out a clip of his, of his podcast and um I'll hear that shit and I'll really sit with it and I'll be like, damn, that's deep. What does that mean? How does that connect to me? Um, and, and it'll lead me down my own self-reflection. But again, it, it's coming from me having a full picture of who these people are rather than just one lens. Um, I don't know if that completely answered what you were asking. No, I, I got good context. Yeah, for sure. 
Uh, also, yeah, shout, out to, like for uh, you. shout out to Mike and Mike, formerly Mike Stud. Yeah. Maybe he'll let me use a intro or a song for my intro. Uh, um, what that process you like for you? Um, yeah, I tend to just kind of like follow my intuition and my gut, you know, like I think I can, I can tell through just being able to have a lot of conversations with people in my real life that how they express themselves through social media, I can just kind of get a feeling. Um, but I don't, I don't follow a ton of people and I follow a very specific amount of people because I only want my feed to be those things. Yeah. Um, and of course I follow the big names, the popular names, right. That everyone knows. Right. But I also like to follow people who are on the grind like me. Like I don't have a million followers. I just care about what I'm doing yeah. and, and want to see other people get inspired by it. And the people doing the same thing, I feel that like through the, through the, the phone, I feel that like that hustle, you know what yeah. I mean? That's why I followed you. Uh, Cause you just see like this guy cares about his work, right? He's putting out these videos. Like yeah. it's kind of awkward to put your phone down and just like record a video in front of your phone and press <laughs> send, right? You know? When you're not um, in the studio, right? When you're in, when you're in like a bedroom or guy, uh, you know, I'm in my, I mean, I'm, I'm in my fucking kitchen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, right. Cause, cause people always say like, they got to have, the perfect mic, the perfect lighting, the perfect setup to start their YouTube channel or to make a podcast or to record a video. I'm like, you don't, you're, that's an excuse because you're, you're a bit scared to start it, right? You just got to start it. And then when you're 45 episodes deep into your podcast and you can see where episode one started and how sweet episode 45 is, right? With the cool mics and the good lighting and the, and the more insightful, wise guests and the conversations are better and you're a better host and you're a better communic like that's the process right i used to i've been a professional wrestler now for like five years okay. and uh i used to be uh basically i used to pretend to be a movie star it was lights camera jackson and so all my content for three years was heavily curated right i had to be a movie star so i was pretending to drive these cars and do these things right it was really 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 taxing like it's really hard because i could never post just like a regular video of myself just like hanging out right it's not what like a movie star would do yeah. and so now i don't do that obviously because a lot of stuff has happened in my life i just present what i want to present and and it's a lot less taxing um but i'm saying those kinds of uh ways of thinking are really challenging and it's hard to put out consistent quality authentic things if you have to curate everything to the highest level um and so that's what i that's what i feel yeah yeah um I think, you know, I think, I think at our core, going back to just like what we believe and what we value, you can pick up in your gut and in your intuition, the authenticity behind someone or the purpose be, behind why they're saying something. Um, when I hear people talk about leading with service and, and inspiring others and wanting to help others, that automatically gets my attention. Um, because I know that they're leading for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's something that I do look for. Um, you know, one thing I will say to, to your point about just showing up on, on social media, and one thing that I continue to figure out is like how to share those lows sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really easy to post the high when you're high, right? super easy because then you're pumping people up you're inspiring people you're feeling it your your juices are flowing but but when you're in those moments of confusion when you're in those moments of darkness when you're in those moments of um stuck um it's sometimes hard to to share that because you don't have the perfect words to say you don't have all that stuff and um that's still something that, you know, new to that platform in that sense, that's still something that I, I continue to get bogged down by um, every now and again. Totally. Yeah. You got to be able to share it all because all that stuff is, is, is an inspiration to someone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 100%. But social media is a tool, just like any other tool, just like a meditation tool or a journaling tool, right? You have to use it appropriately. You have to use it with the right intention. Yeah. Um, and you have to be able to manage it. If you need to stop using your, or stop using Instagram for a week because it's going to help your mental health, do it yeah. right. Nothing, 
nothing should be done at the cost of your mental health. That's the most important thing uh, for me, at least I think. Um, but I want to, I want to get uh, like some actionable stuff that maybe people can start implementing in their life today from you. Um, super, super simple. Um, if someone wants to start changing their life today, what are three things that they should start doing right now? Someone wants to change their life today. Um, the first thing that I would recommend people do, number one, um, is figure out the areas of their life and where they currently are. Um, and I mean that in a sense of look at your income, look at your friends and family, look at your relationships, look at your self-development, look at pockets of your life and just take a baseline out of 10. Where are you? Are you, are you operating at a five? Are you operating at a four? Are you operating at an eight? Very, very small thing is just take an audit on where your current life is right now. Um, again, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just where are you currently? Um, and then number two, figure out where you want to be in all mm -hmm. those areas. Number two is like, okay, if I am with friends and family feeling at a four, but I want to be at an eight, well, okay. Now we know that there's a gap there. Um, and then... And then I would say, ultimately, when you have that information, that's that's the first thing that you can start leaning into um, and just start to track those things. I would say I would say if you're not working with a coach, um, I would say just to start having a lens of awareness around that. So if you're saying that your self-development is um, you want it to be a nine, but you're operating at a three, well, that's that's a six point gap. So that could be a good focus to start with. Just start to to keep track of, of what's going on for your self-development. What do you wake up every day? What are you doing for yourself? What are you not doing for yourself? How is, again, how is it making you feel? Why are you feeling this way? Just start bringing awareness to an area of your life that you want to change. Um, so those are a few things that people could do right off the bat. Um, another thing that, that people can do um, is envision the life that they want. Just pretend nothing else exists and just say, what is the life that I want to live? And just paint that picture. What does it look like? What are you doing? Why are you doing certain things? What is that perfect life to you of ultimate happiness and fulfillment? And when you have that structured, then compare it to your current life. What are barriers? What are reasons? Why aren't you doing those things? What you start to then take a lens to what do I need to continue doing? What am I not doing? Um, you know, if something has for me a lot, a lot had to do with like expectations. Sometimes I struggle because I put so, such high expectations on myself that um, I sometimes don't follow through because I'm worried about failing on whatever that is. Um, but then you can start to get a lens of those things and you can start thinking about, well, if I want this life and I want to live this, how am I aligned to do this? What do I need to go and do? Um, again, if someone's looking to make adjustments to, to ultimately live their best life, again, it's grounded in awareness. It's grounded in thinking about where are you currently? Where do you want to be? What does that look like? And then what are some, what are small steps that you can just start doing day to day to get there? doesn't need to be huge. When you talk about life changes, it's not talking about taking your life from this to something drastic. It can be a life change of, I want to eat more vegetables. Like it can be that, that can be your life change that you're doing. So then what does that look like? What does it look like if you want to eat more vegetables? What do you need to stop doing? What do you need to keep doing? Um, but it, again, it's the awareness and it's the intentionality behind some small things that you can do. Um, so that's what I would recommend people can start doing. Um, start with looking at your life and just where are you in life? Um, and then lean in potentially um, to one of those areas if you want to just start bringing in awareness um, and then set yourself some goals.
Yeah, it's really just about one getting one percent better at one thing yep. every day, you know? Yep. And I th- I think one of the the biggest detriments to human potential is not being able to take an honest look at ourselves. Yeah. And so once we can take an honest look at ourselves, and that look is hard, there's a lot of things that you're gonna unpack that are dark and deep and scary. Um but like you said, once you're aware of those things, then we can actually work to fix them, to heal them, to help them, and to grow from them. Um, I want to ask you one last question, and then we'll talk about your podcast a little bit. But why do you think there's such a big stigma attached to change, attached to growth, attached to changing your mind? I w- you're not the person you once were. You know, your college friends don't know you as well anymore because you're not the person you were in college. Why is there such a stigma attached to growing as a human? It's a great question. I think I think the stigma around changing growth um, is is rooted in if you're looking to change and grow, there must be something wrong. Mm-hmm. I think, I think people, when it comes to changing and growing, um, if you were to say to someone, Hey, I'm not the same as I was yesterday, or I'm not the same as I was last year. They're like, well, is everything okay? What happened? What, like, but, but your life was good. What do you, you know, I think, I think that ends up being some of the stigma around change. Um, where I don't see it that way. I see, I see, I, I personally see growth and change as constantly evolving into the person that you are becoming. Um, and, and, and being able to create the awareness for yourself of where you want to get to in your life. And, and what does that need to look like? Um, I think, I think it's Ed Milet. And my let says something really funny. He talked about, um, I think he's got a teenage daughter. Um, and I guess like every year for his, every year for his birthday, like he just does something like crazy. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I hope this is Ed my let, but, um, she said something about like, dad, it always seems like every year you're just having like a midlife crisis. <laughs> and, and he was like, And he said something like just so pure to her of like, sweetie, if I'm not having a a crisis and changing each year, then there's something, there's something way wronger with me. Um, But I think the, I, I think, I think in terms of that too, that stigma is people find comfort and they sit in comfort. Um, They don't, they're afraid to step outside the box. They're afraid to, they're afraid to take that, that risk, take that leap um, because of all the things that could p- potentially happen. Oh, well, my life's so perfect. I have all these things. So like, I don't need to, I don't need to do that. It's this security is so much better for me than, mm-hmm. than any of those things. But um, I think, I think comfort around change is a, is a stigma. Um And I also think that 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 there's just sometimes a negative connotation around growing and changing, that there's got to be something wrong rather than evolving through experiences. Uh, Yeah, I think uh, I think that's perfect. I think you're yeah, couldn't have said it better. Right. It's it's rooted in in uh, in not wanting to get uncomfortable. We'd rather take a little bit of like unhappiness over the uncomfortableness that might come if we if we go after what we want. So I think you're obviously right. hundred percent beautiful. And you mentioned in what you were saying, the name of your podcast, I did. Which is a per- perfect segue. Uh, so you have I a podcast. For you. I yes. I loved it. Thank you for the, for the alley. Uh, <laughs> um, so the name of your podcast is called outside the box. Um, do you want to touch on what it's about, where people can find it and then share your Instagram handle and then we'll, uh, we'll let you go. Yeah. Um, well, again, a little bit of, of what I was just explaining, um, for, for everyone listening, um, you can find me at Griffin Gervais on Instagram. Um, if you go on any 
Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, you search my name, Griffin Gervais, or you search Outside the Box, you can find um, my podcast. But basically, my podcast called Outside the Box is really um, bringing people together to share um, things in their life that they've done to just basically chase their dreams. Every single one of us has a story. Every single one of us has gone through ups and downs. Some people decide not to dive into things. Some people dive into things. And I want listeners to be able to hear someone's story and have something resonate with them. Maybe they had an experience similar to them. Maybe they had a mindset shift that's like theirs. Maybe they're feeling stuck like some of these people are. Um, and so through some of the interviews that I've had, I really just want to highlight people who are, are overcoming those things, who are overcoming some of the fears that they had in their life, who are setting habits for themselves, and then who are ultimately going after their most fulfilling and happy, happiest life. Um, and then some of my solo episodes are just different tips and tricks to get there. Um, and, and not necessarily um, get there in the moment, but just, just start bring the, bringing the lens to some habits, some routines that can work. Um, and again, I'm no doctor, I'm no scientist, but um, really just sharing what's worked for me. Um, I've talked about meditation. I've talked about um, just doing some different things through self-awareness and um, some activities. And so um, if, you're, if you're on the road or wanting to... Um, be part of a community of just people growing and learning and supporting and being their best selves. Come, come give it a, come give it a listen and check it out. Absolutely. Yes. Everyone, everyone go follow him on Instagram, check out an episode of his podcast. Um, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I enjoy getting to know you. I'm sure we'll stay in contact. I imagine I'll be on your pod sometime sure. soon. Uh, but yeah, man, beautiful. Maybe one day we'll meet in person, maybe not, but we still got a special connection nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I appreciate it. I appreciate what you're doing, the space that you're holding, um, what you're creating. I think it's, I think it's super, I think mental health in general is, is most important. It's gotta be a priority. Um, and again, just males talking about mental health, huge, huge. Um, so I'm grateful for this connection. I'm grateful to grow this relationship. I will definitely, we'll get you on my pod. Um, but Jackson, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you so much for everyone who watched. Share this episode with everyone that you know, because I guarantee it can help them. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, take care of each other and uh, much love. Thank you.